Hey guys, so today I'm going to be doing a different kind of a video and that's what I'm going to be trying to do from now on is different kind of videos. So Samantha Ravindal did a video, Holy Girl Products I've Replaced. So I was going to do that, but then I was like, why not do a half and half and show how my old Holy Girl favorites compare to my current Holy Girl favorites. How do they compare? Are they really that different? Should I start using them again? I don't want to say that I've replaced it, not have tried it in a long time. And I was going to do like old products, old techniques, new products, new techniques, but then I was like, that's not really giving the products a fair chance because if they performed well with my current techniques that I use, then I wouldn't know because I used my old techniques. I'm going to be doing my current Holy Grail products on this side and my old Holy Grail products that I've replaced on this side. I'm going to be using my new current techniques overall. That's what we're going to be doing. I was also thinking in the future doing my current favorite products. Old techniques on one side, new techniques on the other side. I wanted a controlled variable if you want to bring in science. Today's going to be comparing the products. If you want to see that next video, then that will be comparing the techniques. Let's just go ahead and get on into the video. For the eyes, I've used the Santi Super Smooth Concealer as a primer for a long time, so this is kind of like my old and still current Holy Grail. So the product I've replaced is the BH Cosmetics Carly Bible Deluxe Edition Palette. I haven't used this in so long. I used to love this. This is such a beautiful eyeshadow palette. Super natural and just romantic. This is just like a super cute, super good palette. I don't know if this is still available. I meant to check. Who guessed what replaced it? Jaclyn Hill Morphe Palette definitely has replaced it as well as a whole my eyeshadows. I'm going to be using this shade with this shade shade all over the lid. In this palette, this one was the most similar to that one, and then using this pink, because they both are pink with like an orangey kind of duochrome shade. Fan. I've literally already been filming for 10 minutes. How is that possible? I'm going to use the cream shade from this palette on both of the eyeballs, because I love that cream shade. There's no cream shade in the Back on home Orby palette. But I am gonna try and start doing these kind of videos because I'm just very inspired because Samantha Ravendahl, Emily Noel, Mariah Leonard, JK, so they all do videos that are very unique that you don't see, like they create these things. Obviously, I'm not creating this because I did this based off of Samantha Ravendahl. I just need to stop thinking about if people will watch this. I just need to do things that I wanna do. Okay. I'm just gonna start saying old and new, even though the products aren't new, I've been using them for like at least four months. The first shade I'm gonna use in this palette is this one, and I'm actually probably going to mix it with this shade just to cool it down a little bit because that shade is very warm, very orange. And the one in the Morphe palette is not like that. Then I'm going to be using the top two shades in this palette. It's probably going to be a little different. Since that was way more pigmented, I'm going to go back in with just the first warm shade on this one and not tap it off because I feel like this kind of just blended away. Oh, it's pretty similar, right? This one might be a little more orange, but that's fine. Then I'm going to go in with the warm shade. So I'm going to pack this on the outer corner, also putting this in the crease. Oh, I literally just did that. So we're going to take this brush and... <laughs> <laughs> try and sweep this off. It's just a habit. Okay, I think I got actually all of that off. That was pretty good. Thank you, brush. You made a mistake. It's fine. We're just gonna keep going on this eye. And I have a paper towel here with like some brush cleaner on it that I'm wiping it off in between. Don't you worry. And I thought that Pukey would be the perfect shade for this one in this palette, but I think it's way too pigmented for this one. So I'm going to go in with this shade. So I feel like this one isn't as warm. I'm going to mix that one with Pukey, like a dash, because Pukey is super warm. So adding that dab of Pukey at the end made it a little more than this one. I'm just going to go back to the Carly Pat one. the same darker shade and just build it up. So I feel like these ones are very powdery. I used to not have that much experience with shadows, so I didn't think that it was anything different. I just didn't really care. Because to me, powdery meant like it had fallout. So I was like, oh, I don't care if they're powdery as long as they are pigmented. Which is, is pigmented, but like, you can tell, like, it's so much more vibrant on this side than this side. This one just has so much more dimension already. I'm going to mix in that, like, Hershey chocolate shade at the bottom. I'm just doing this for a little more depth. There's already a bunch of fallout on this side, and there's none on this side. I don't really care about fallout. I'm pointing something out. So I'm going to go back over it with that orange shade just to make sure everything is orange. I'm trying to build it up, and it's just not. The thing is, it took me two seconds over here, and it's still not even like that over here. I think I'm going to add a bit of top notch. Put this in here because, like, it is one of my old 
favorites and I don't really use it anymore. I'm literally going to go in with the tiniest touch. Now for the lid colors. I'm not cutting the lid. I'm just going to do it with my finger. I'm going to use these pink shades. This one is like super soft. You could press it in and it moves. And I really never played with the pink shade from either of these palettes. I did try and use it one time from the Morphe palette and it didn't turn out like how I expected because it was a lot more duochrome than pink. It's really just like this. This pink one that well. I feel like this one's probably lighter. Yeah, totally fine. It's definitely a lot more vibrant of a pink and this one is more duochrome and I did drag it all the way out to the outer corner do a little swipey swipe clean it off and do a little celebrity swipe and make sure that shimmer isn't up in the crease <sighs> like there's little powder all over this palette that's pretty similar right and actually the Carly Bible one is a lot more vibrant because those are the highlighters and the highlighters are amazing on the Carly Bible brow bone I'm going to take this shade these are both collab palettes I just realized that and on this one, I'm going to take on lace. This one's definitely like a lighter pink, and this one's more rose gold. This side is so much more messy, and this one is like clean. So they actually look completely different. I actually didn't think this side would look this bad. I actually thought that I loved this palette, which I did. You can just see how much like my preferences have like changed. Like it doesn't look bad like by itself. But like whenever you compare it to these shadows, I really spent like more time blending these ones. Now we're gonna move on to the face. This is a product that I've replaced, but I really have a similar product. AOA Studio Wonder Skin Illuminating Primer. I used to love this before I got the Wet n Wild one. I would recommend this as a single primer, but when you compare this to the Wet n Wild one, the Wet n Wild one is so much better and it's literally like three or four dollars more. I don't know what's so good about the Wet n Wild one. See, I'm using the same technique. I bring it up under my eyes. I put it everywhere. This has like a pink reflex. And the Wet n Wild one has like a bronzy reflect too. Like that one looks so much better. Like literally shines through your makeup. I feel like this one is a lot more moisturizing. You'd think that I would like that, but this one just like sets and it's literally like, I don't know. If you've been watching my channel for a while, you will know the concealer that's going on this side. I think I'm just gonna mix these. I used to really love the Catrice Liquid Camouflage Concealer. I still love it. I still love a lot of these products, but I replaced them for a reason. This one is so pretty, so natural looking. This one I used for like under my eyes blemishes i still actually occasionally use this for blemishes just because it is a little darker so it's like my skin tone exactly it's like a light to medium coverage and this is like medium coverage i feel like this concealer is just like all of this with more coverage y'all know about this one y'all will literally know everything on the side of the face this one is obviously thicker that's why i like it it's because it has more coverage i'm gonna use the same sponge i don't care i'll just blend out this side first i don't want to give it more coverage by using this one for powder for the old side i'm gonna be using the maybelline fit me loose setting powder i used to think this was the bomb.com and i was like this literally makes any look go great i am gonna be using it like i use this powder to be giving it a fair shot which is the aoa studio perfect setting powder i use the tiniest amount and just set my under eye with the sponge but like I don't bake or anything so I'm just gonna bounce a little bit under there and then move it to the chin because that was too much for the under eyes. I feel like it mattifies so much more as well. And actually I think my under eyes look kind of tight. I use a lot less powder. It's helping it a lot more. This doesn't look that bad. I honestly think that it's the technique that I started using whenever I started using the AOA Studio one. This one, like, I don't really care if I go overboard. I can just, like, pack the powder on and I feel like it would probably never get cakey. But, like, this one I, like, had to try and make sure that I didn't use that much. This one I just feel like has, like, a glow to it. Even though it doesn't show, like, on my hand or, like, on the sponge or in the powder. Like, but once I put it on my skin, I just feel like my skin looks so much like skin. This side is pretty much all the way matte now. Like, you can see, like the smallest bit of glow right there but like look at this side like you can still see for bronzer i'm actually really excited i haven't touched this bronzer in so long and i do not know why i totally forgot about this this used to be my favorite and this is the wet and wild mega glow contouring palette in dolce the light j what replaced it was the elf cool bronzer i probably had them for the same amount of time but i just love this because i just mix all of them together or i can focus on like this one i can use this as a blush i just like this for more of like a bronzier peachy look i am actually gonna focus on bronzing today i'm gonna go in super lightly because i don't really remember like i'm sorry this one's great no build up and blend out i might have gone a little crazy on the forehead but that's fine it's how we're looking it's very natural to me that looks natural i can use this as bronzer and contour because for bronzer i mix them all together for contour i just use one for blush i use that one so i literally have like everything yeah buddy <laughs> we love that patch but it still blends. When I use this, I bring it up on my cheeks as well. It's pinkier. As you can see, this side is like way warmer. And this one's just like 
natural sun kind of now i'm gonna go in with a more precise murray take this contour shade right here just to try and focus we're gonna take this palette once again and try and go over that offer blush this side as you can see i really didn't like shimmery products on my face now i love it i used to like this amused blush and sunsets because it was matte but it was also peachy i'm gonna bring it like into my like face and i also blend it into my contour just because we don't want no harsh lines I'm obviously using Wet Wild Georgia Roche Champagne on the shirt. This pretty much has no color. It's just adding glow to my cheeks. <laughs> For the highlighter, the real holy grail one was the Flower Beauty Shimmer and Strobe Highlighting Palette. I used to stinking love this palette. I literally haven't touched this in so long. This is so pretty. I used to use this every day. But then once I got this one, this literally just has all the colors in it. I really feel like I like these a little better. These are less powdery. I feel like they just blend into my skin better than those and those still kind of like sit on top of my skin. I'm gonna mix these two. So beautiful. What I'm thinking sitting on top of the skin is because how I used to use it. This technique just like buffs it into your skin and like makes it melt into your skin. Let's bring this into the brow. I'm gonna go down the side of the nose, side of the chin. Right off my brush, don't you worry honey. This one and this one and maybe a tap of this one. Not really too much powder whenever I tap it off. It's like so dense but normally you would think that dense would be a bad thing like but it's not. And I just feel like this one I did blend in a lot um but like this one it took me two seconds to blend now for the lower lash line the shade and buff it all over the lash line the shade with a little bit of pukey oh we got a little bit of crease ejection going on this goes way better but that also could be because the concealer might still be a little tacky I'm mixing that other one with pukey for this eye i'm gonna take the pinky shade in the garly bible palette we'll see how this applies with the brush focusing it mostly on this inner part but then I'm also dragging it all the way out, but just going super lightly. Now I always do. I'm gonna try and blend this in on the inner corner. I'm gonna put the pink shade in the Morphe palette. I'm gonna go in with the inner corner. Light pinky shade on this side. Wipe it off. Light pinky highlighter shade in this side. I'm gonna go do like my girl shady slim brow pencil. The mascara is the same, which is Maybelline Lash Sensational. Went ahead and did like mascara brows, and I also did Mr. Bing and my tight line and waterline. I've just really been liking that color on my toy. I also already did my lips. I used to really love the NYX Andre liquid lipsticks. I don't really know what I like now, so I just mix these two because I really never use these. Maybelline into matte nudes and brown blush and almond rose. It's really pretty and. It's comfortable formula. This is like the two like looks compared. I know I literally just did like a comparison like warm and cold makeup look. It wasn't just, it was like a few videos ago, but I really like the makeup look. They don't actually look too different now that everything is on. I would probably wear this one again just because it was a lot easier blend. I don't like hate any of my old products. The only thing that I really think that I'm gonna like go back to and feel like I missed is the Wet n Wild contouring powder. I just like totally forgot about it. Once again, let me know if you want to see that other video down below and also just tell me any videos you want me to do i want to try and start getting more creative with my content i really hope y'all enjoyed this video if you did i would love it if you subscribed down below and please give this video a big thumbs up it means so much to me thank you so much for watching bye